All right, we were just talking about our truckload of vets coming in. Uh, this is what we got. About half of the truckload is for us right now. These are 23s. Now, I do like, let me tell you one of my wacky Corvette ideas. Right there is one of the new wheels for 23. I love it because as the spokes come down, they simulate a Corvette emblem. Similar to, uh, well, I'm sorry. I got my track tires on there, but similar to the Q80. Right, let's get away from that truck. Yeah, so those are similar to my Spectre Gray machine-faced wheels. I was thinking about, just probably not gonna do it. I was just gonna think about getting those wheels and putting them on my car. Then I'd be one of those goofballs and people would come up and go, wow, Rick, hey, hey, you did get a 23 and you got the same color. No, I'm just the idiot that bought the 23 wheels and put them on my 21, so no. <laughs> you know, a lot of folks do that. If you look now, you'll see C5s that have C6 wheels on them, C7 wheels on them, so yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that. All right, guys, we are gonna have a Tech Tuesday, but can I just really quick make a quick statement about our Sunday Coffee with Conti video? You can go on YouTube one time, you can cut out a segment of the video. I did that because my conversation about flippers seemed to hijack the video, and that wasn't the intention. We had some fun, we had some great information for you guys about those production, those CTF Z06s, and everything got lost in the shuffle. And it wasn't fair to you guys because in that subject, I wasn't able to speak completely and freely on the flipper subject so many people were making comments without really knowing the full picture at least where i'm coming from and i have some more to say on that stuff i really just can't say right now maybe we save that for the book maybe it's a future video but we will talk about it and i do appreciate your support and understanding dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. i know everything's so freaking dramatic you know i just want to sell cars have fun you know the heck Oh, yeah. And thank you so much for all the emails you guys have been sending. Um, I think Chuck and I have Tech Tuesdays, at least questions to answer for the next month. Get as many as we Look can. Look there, Axel, two pieces. Two pieces. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's make a statement about this. Everybody's like, hey, okay, so we're sharing the progression about my car. Rick, what did you do to the car? I was getting ready to do a drag race. It had been a while since I did launch control. I was getting ready to do launch control. As soon as I put my foot on the gas, this, oh my God, dude, does that sound awful? This happened, okay? And let me address what some of you had said. Ooh, oh, I ain't working on this filthy thing. You got bird poop on you. <laughs> <laughs> car poop. <laughs> Some of you guys had said, well, Rick, you've been sharing all kinds of stuff that you've been doing with your car, and you've really been hard on your car. That's what happens. No, 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 no. Time out. Back up. This is, in case you didn't know, a Corvette. It's designed and developed for aggressive and spirited driving. I did not abuse the car. There's a difference. I've been driving this car the way it was intended to be driven. So... I'm not happy about it. I wanted to share this with you guys. We share everything very real. And it's to let you know that stuff does happen, okay? And you've got a warranty, fix it, move on, and hopefully it doesn't happen again. You wanna ask a, you wanna ask a I question? I wanna ask you a question. Okay. You, you called me at 9.30 at night, which I'm half asleep. <laughs> right. Told me what happened, and from two counties away, I told you you probably snapped an axle. Right. Ergo, what happened? Snapped an axle, okay. right, Just absolutely. Checking. <laughs> no, here's one thing too. A lot of people have responded to the Instagram and Facebook posts. You and I talked about this and just so people know, they go, well, didn't you get any warnings on your dash? No. This is mechanical, not electrical. Nothing on my Chevy app, nothing on the dash of the car, but we knew. That one looks all right, doesn't it? Yeah. This driver error. Pardon me. Is this driver error? <laughs> Always take the shot at the guy. Always take the shot. Be careful, I fire back. Yeah, yeah right, all right. So this is some of the fun, the spirited driving that I want to continue to participate in the car. This is why, as I told Ryan, hey, I want to go to pit race, I want to go to Atlanta. I don't know if I'm gonna have time to do that this year, but this is why I, I wanted to buy a trailer in case this happens and you're three hours away or you're three states away so you can get home. So as I share my ownership experiences with you guys, I learn and I'm trying to help educate other people. Now they're watching and may do stuff in their car like we're doing. 
I've encouraged a lot of people to do some autocross stuff, and this is part of the process. An extra set of tires, part of the process, because these right here, see, there's a lot of tread in these still, man. But right here, as soon as these start heating up, they are so slippery. And for low-speed autocross, you need that part of the tire because of all the turning you're doing, and they're just not performing well. So I don't know if I'm gonna get another session in with these or not, uh, but high-speed pit race is really in my, in my target. Uh, the new tires are gonna go on, and then my all-seasons, Somebody put some crap on top of my tires, but my all seasons are sitting over here. Terrible that guy keeps stacking stuff on your wheels. Isn't no, it? I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, years ago, Corvette buyers and owners, I'll try to make this short because I want to get to Tech Tuesday questions, but Corvette owners and buyers would have, and me too, had that perception of ownership and only drive it on nice days and nobody touch or sit in my car. I'm having so much fun with this car and having the opportunity to share it with you guys really means a lot. Thanks for being interested and, and watching and tuning in and responding and engaging. But now that stuff's happening in my car because I'm using it, I don't care. It's like, hey, let's get it fixed and I want to move on to the next memory. And no, not that you guys care or in case you're curious, uh, there's my ride until, <laughs> until my car gets fixed. All right, you guys, sorry about that. Enough about my car, but welcome to our Tech Tuesday show. Uh, hold on, Rick, I got a question. What? I mean, seriously, dude, why didn't you pull over and call a tow truck? <laughs> You're not the first one to ask that. I mean, you know, I mean, I can, can say you got lucky because the axle kind of stayed together and didn't beat the whole rear suspension of the car up, but it broke the outer CV, so. We'll All right, so this is, this is worthwhile talking about on Tech Tuesday, the whole premise of the show. So again, you can learn from my mistake. Part of it is two things. Do mm -hmm. tell. One was the Italian in me. <laughs> so I'm just so ticked off. Yeah. And I wanted to get the car back to the dealership. And truly, if you remember that night, we had a really bad thunderstorm come through. Heavy winds, knocked down some trees. And it was like right there. Uh-huh. So. I did think about calling a tow truck, and I thought, well, by the time this guy gets here, I was just a few miles away from the dealership. By the time he got there, I'm trying to figure out how to load up the car. Here comes the rain. I didn't want my door open, just getting splattered with rain, and just and just having to deal with it. But basically, it took me a half an hour to drive a few miles. I, I drove very slow. It was a horrible sound. I was cringing the whole time. I just wanted to get back to the store. Uh huh. I wanted to put it in the hands of my favorite Corvette technician because I know you can make it better. Well, yeah. Better. You can make it stronger. Sure. Stronger. You can make it faster. Absolutely. Sure. Faster. Is there an echo in here? Oh my gosh, it's, it's the $6 million man. Hopefully make it smarter to call the tow truck next time. <laughs> make it smarter. I'm gonna have the first bionic Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I should have towed the car. Thankfully, as you said earlier, nothing else was damaged. Right, the, C, the outer CV constant velocity joint came apart, but the axle stayed in the cone. So it was just rattling around in the cone rather than beating the crap out of the rear suspension. And of course, uh, given the situation that our world is in right now, you told me it's on? On uh, national back order. National back order, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> you start before I start throwing something. <laughs> Stay tuned till we get to part. <laughs> All right, this first one comes from Terry. It says, I have an issue with my 2020 C8. While driving, the engine RPMs are going up and down at a steady speed. You can feel and hear the engine going up and down also. Please review the video attached. Notice that the number of cylinders stays at V8 mode. Thank you guys for all you do. Uh, we didn't get the video. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, I emailed him back and I said, hey, no video was attached and I never heard back from him. So sorry, it's hard yeah. to kind of speculate. Yeah, it's kind of hard to speculate what's going on. Yeah, because the first thing I said was, well, maybe it's switching from V4 mode. And you said, no, read right. the email. It says he's stuck in V8 and it's right. changing RPM. So You ever notice that in your car? You drive, get to drive yours more than I get to drive any of them. Uh, no, actually, I, I haven't. Okay. If, if it's doing it, I'm not really paying attention to it, but no. Sure. No, don't know how much 
the RPMs is going up and down, don't really tell us that, so. All right, Tech Tuesday continues. We've got a ton of questions. I'm just gonna tell you probably uh, next Tuesday, we won't have a Tech Tuesday. We have the Z06 dealer tour, so it's gonna be hard to film, edit, and all that. Uh, so we'll try and get something up as quickly as we can because we've got a lot of questions. Thanks, you guys, for sending them in. All right, this one comes from Hugh. It says, uh, Rick and Chuck, thank you again for taking the time to answer Tech Tuesday questions. I learned so much about the C8 just by watching you guys on the channel. Your dedication and knowledge are valuable to the Corvette community. Thank you. We enjoy being here with you guys. We really do. This is a lot. We have fun. We keep it real. But there is some good content coming from the questions that you guys are asking. I've got a 2022 C8 hardtop convertible. Vehicle has less than 800 miles. And again, you and I didn't get a chance to review this. So right. kind of just spontaneous to throw this at. This is going to be for you. Um, I'm smelling gasoline when it's hot outside. I check the garage floor. There's no gasoline leak on the floor. But it smells like gasoline when I drive. I took the car to the dealership after four days. They, they can't find any issues with the car. Instead of enjoying my car, I'm now afraid to drive my car. Uh, just wondering if you or Chuck have experienced anything like this or anything that you could suggest that I need to look at or check into. Should I take the car back to the same dealer or try a different dealer here in Houston? Thank you for looking into this. I haven't experienced anything like that, no. no. And usually when we see these problems from folks because of the volume of cars that we do, Sometimes we do see some of this stuff. Yeah. yeah, sometimes. But I haven't had anybody complain about a fuel odor or a fuel smell from their C8. Yeah, so, and maybe you can expand on this, his question, does he go back to the original dealer? And, and sometimes, well, here's the thing. When you got a warranty issue, sometimes you go to a, a secondary dealer, and they're gonna go, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Coughlin already started a case on this. They already started working on this. Right. They're getting paid for the warranty repair. We can't jump in on this unless uh, you really got to go through some steps so they can work on it and get paid. They're going to refer you back to the original dealer. That is correct. That's an actual statement. Once a dealer starts working on one, it, it's kind of hard to take it to another dealer to jump in the middle of something, especially if they've already started a tack case. But not unheard of. I mean, not you've jumped in on other warranty claims, but it was difficult because then you've got to call wait forever to get approval because right. the other dealers already tore apart a clutch or a transmission yeah. and you know before you can move forward and do the same work that essentially they supposedly did right yeah so it could it could be difficult maybe i guess just go back to the original dealer try and drive in the situation see if they can go i don't know if they drove the car well and try to give them as much information as you can about the car is it after a long drive is it after it sit for a while or, you know what's the temperature but he said he was still smelling gas when he drove so i try to get something see if you can get a technician to ride with you it's hot out i mean it's hot all the time in houston so and how long you have to drive to get that fuel smell good point yeah all right so try that hugh hopefully that helps you but, yeah because you know you're you guys are out driving them every day you bring them into a dealer we might take them for a three to five ten mile test drive and something's happening to you 15 20 miles into your drive so you need to try to pinpoint and give them as much information as possible to help them try to find it all right a couple more for you guys today and then we do have a beautiful ride segment all right, this one comes from the 951 area code. It says, hi, Rick, love your show, both YouTube channels. I have a question that may deeper dive into some Tech Tuesday stuff. Chuck mentioned a special tool he ordered to check rear, oh, to read rear axle caster on C8 Corvettes. <coughs> Excuse me, this was actually came out in the C7 era, right. but it transfers over to the C8. Uh, is that tool specific to your alignment equipment? I want a track alignment on my car. I have reversed the washer spacer shims on the upper control arm. What should I ask to know the shop has what's needed to complete a proper track alignment? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, on the rear caster on these C7 and C8, you need a digital angle gauge. You also need the adapter and the pins. It goes into the to the rear knuckle then the digital angle gauge goes into these special things and actually reads the rear caster it's the only way you can set the caster up because the caster is no longer on the alignment machine that you're looking at so i like that we're getting a lot of questions about tracking and stuff like that i've been sharing my experiences with you guys on the channel and there's a lot of cool stuff to come once my car's put back together um <laughs> but i will advise you guys if you're not doing intense 
and this is my opinion, if you're not doing intense tracking, competing tracking, if you're just doing spirited driving, double check, just rethink wanting to do a track alignment because you guys, mm -hmm. you and Nate have done a couple and mm -hmm. a track alignment drives like what on the street? It drives like crap on the street because you're not on, you're not on the track. On a track alignment, you're going to change the cast or the camber or the toe because you want as much contact on the road as you're pitching through the turns at 100, 150 mile an hour. If you're not doing that on the street, the car is going to feel funny. It's not going to ride right. So if you're going to do a track alignment, my suggestion is make the car a track car. A car you trailer to the track, you run on the track, you put back in the trailer, you take home and park to your next track event. That's the great value off the shelf Corvette. It's for the street, it's for the track, and that's how I drive. I don't, I'm not going to touch my alignment because once you get the track alignment and you've compromised the factory settings, getting it back, you know, getting it back oh. in the factory settings, yeah. it's a pain in the ass. Oh, not only that, if something happens at the track, Good point. you may never get it back. Right. And it may not be something severe. I mean, you could run off the run off into the gravel and slightly tweak something, or sure. I mean, and again now, and then finding something that's tweaked one or two thousandths, you you realize that the alignments are done in thousandths of an inch, thousandths of a degree. So if you tweak it one way or another, you may never get it back in alignment. Now, for you hardcore trackers in the link. In the description down below in the video, you can access it on your phone or on your computer. I've got PDF guide for, well, the PDF guide from Chevrolet is very intense and very specific for those type of track individuals. For me, as we talked about before, I do just a few different things. Uh, you and I are gonna look at my brake pads and things like that, but yeah, this, this alignment thing. I actually had a customer that bought two C7s. He bought a convertible for his wife that they drive on the street, okay. and then he bought a Grand Sport that he does nothing but track. Mm -hmm. And that's all he does with the car. We put the bought longer rear toe links and stuff to get the track alignment. He puts it on his trailer, trailers it to the track. Well, guess what? His new C8 will be here in just a little bit. He's getting ready to track it. He wants you to add the two quarts of prep and everything. <laughs> yeah. That's Bill. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we talked for an hour and a half this past weekend just about tracking. So yeah. it's fun because when you get out in a controlled environment, sorry, spending more time on this than, than I anticipated, but when you get your car out and you can drive it as it's intended, as we talked about earlier today, not abusing the car, spirited driving, you really come to appreciate this car Sure. You just you have a blast, and that's what the car's for. Well, I mean, when, uh, just briefly, I'm sure when we was in Pahrump in 2019, yeah. they didn't have track alignments on those cars, even though we were on the track. They were probably factory alignments, and we had a good time on the track with them. All right, a couple more for you guys today. See, we love talking to you and just having real conversations. This one comes from Mark in Arizona. Uh, Rick, I'm just curious on your thoughts on how the rear window and the hardtop convertible of C8 collects a, a fair amount of water back there. I own a coupe, and I saw my neighbor with a hardtop convertible. When he's washing it or it rains, all that water sits there in that little window back there. Yes, it does. Um, good luck if you decide to roll the window down. No, the window only goes down to this much. So the window, the back of the tonneau covers here, and the window still sits about this high. So water, unless it's just really excessive i mean would, would come up over that i mean my, you're talking a couple of inches but when i'm in a and i've done a few uh touchless uh, car washes and i'm looking back there and you can see the water coming up but as soon as you drive the aerodynamics of this car just whoosh just falls right off if you're spraying it just wipe it right off and they make a thing called a chamois and you can get that so it's really not a big deal so uh interesting question good concern so how do you like the water that gets all in the back of your coupe and you got to lean in there and reach and clean up all those water spots uh, how do you like that ha. <laughs> all right this one comes from robert says i have a 2021 c8 coupe and one of your chuck's opinion on adding the two extra quarts of the fluid through the transmission oil check plug. Oh, come on. <laughs> no way, man. It is my understanding that if you jack the driver's side of the car up to a 13 degree angle, you can act it, actually add the extra two quarts through the oil transmission check plug. Can this be, and this can be completed in a fraction of the time and less complicated than disassembling the trunk area. Wait, I know this quote from a good friend of mine. 
a really good Corvette technician. Do you want it done right or do you want it done right now? That is the wrong way to do that. Well, yeah, I don't think people really understand what a 13 degree is. <laughs> it is. And here's the other problem, and I don't think people have thought about this, and I don't know if it's happened to anybody, but if you do that, and you happen to, for some reason, drop that drain, that fill plug, now what do you do? You got a car at a 13 degree angle, your oh, drain, so your check plug's now down in the valley pan. So when you put the car back down to get the drain plug, all the fluid you put in falls out. Sure. <laughs> Now you gotta take the whole panel off from underneath the rear of the car to get the drain plug, clean up your mess, jack it back up to another 13 degree angle, hopefully they don't slide off whatever you got jacked up on. And that, yeah, it, GM come up with the way to do it, which is tearing the interior part, putting it through the fill plug, and that's how we do it, so. Uh, here's a quick one from Stuart. Uh, Hi Rick, is it possible to replace C7 seats for a different color? In other words, I have an all black interior and I'd like to go to red. Are there OEM seats out there or can I have them reupholstered? You actually did this to a car. Yeah, I did. You had a guy, he had, a, had an all black interior, remember that, it took forever. Yeah. And he changed the entire, he changed the dash, the door panels, everything. So. It depends on what extent you want to do this, but yes, you can do that. You can order the factory parts through Chevrolet Parts and put them in. You reskin the seats, you put in new door panels, new armrests. New dash, new center console. I yeah, mean, because as soon as you change that and you're trying to match the stitch, I mean, it gets really involved. So you can do that. There are some aftermarket parts companies out there that you can buy some of their retrofitted parts that'll fit your car, but in most cases, you can take off the leather skin area, have an upholstery shop do that so they can stretch it properly and put it back on the car. But uh, yeah, that's that's actually possible. And we, just like what you was talking about, stitching. They're stitching in the gear shift. The gear shift had to be replaced. Steering, wheel. Steering wheel had to be replaced. Yes. The airbag, stitching around the airbag had to be replaced. I mean, it was very expensive and very time consuming to do that, but he wanted it done, so we did it. Did you put the skins on the seat? Yeah. What did you? They actually look pretty good. I know you don't like doing that. Well, I mean, it's kind of tough, because just like you said. You know the toughest ones are? Are the competition sports seats, because oh, yeah. that stupid opening that car. I won't do the competition seat. <laughs> I tried one and broke that $400 piece. Yeah. So That's yeah, we, we do send those out to the upholstery shop. <laughs> but I mean, it's tough, because I don't have the stuff here to stretch the leather, right. to, I, but some of them I can do, some of them I refuse to do. You got any more or are we done? I'm, I'm, I'm we're just we're just talking. Yeah. We have a tendency to do that, don't we? <laughs> but you guys get involved in the conversations, you engage, the conversations continue with the comments down below. Please do that for us. You send in emails, the address is up on the screen, continue to do that. We'll get to as many as we can each and every week and know my car is not going back to Bowling Green, but it will become the first Corvette in the world. It'll be the first bionic Corvette. <laughs> I'm hoping we get some news on some parts. Disclaimer, don't do what Rick did. Yeah, Call the tow truck. Yeah. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. Right, absolutely. Thanks for watching today, guys. Uh, have a great day. A lot of content coming here on the channel, so support us by subscribing. It's free, hit the bell notification, and do thumbs up this particular video. Don't go yet. Uh, you like talking about cars? How about seeing some cool cars? These are your beautiful rides. <laughs>
inside is bleeding Oh, and your heart's bleeding And all you can see is red Till you discover It is within each other To forgive and make amends If I had known then Or what I know now I wouldn't have said what I said I took the long road Thought I'd be better on my own Sometimes what's right is wrong instead Cause I And I didn't understand that you 